counting good, counting fades, but that's not the point. Does Pac fades Man. not count either way? Okay, it does, <laughs> but like we're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> okay, okay, here we are. Um, but yes, we're gonna have Freud, the big baby, against Pac-Man. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit scary if we just can't see. Um, Guga not really place their buttons enough to the point where they need to remove hydrant from the equation and just deal with a lot of the safe aerials that Pac-Man has. Yeah, Pac-Man, he's one of those, he's absolutely like up in the upper echelon of characters. But he feels like he can do it all sometimes. Now, Sinji is obviously going to play his Sinji style, which is forcing you to get impatient, forcing you to kind of run into his hydrant. But Pac-Man can just do this. He can play off stage for so long because his recovery is so good and he can stall forever thanks to his hydrant. He can play up close and in your face. He can play out of shield. He can play heavy punish. Or he can force you to he can force you to feel bad and punish you with a bell into one of his incredible F smashes. Pac-Man is just so flexible as a character while also being able to set these walls. So it, it's really going to be a test on Kuga's part as Sinji gatekeeps him from the winner side top 24 and gatekeeps him out of this out of center stage for basically the entirety of the stock this look like gatekeeping to you? He is preventing <laughs> him to get to center for the past 30 seconds. <laughs> I mean, okay, yes, but that was looking like... Sinji was looking a little bit uh, like the... Uh, I don't know, winner of that interaction there, but I mean, right now, all Sinji really needs is probably a very yeah. bad out of shield option like that in order to take that stock, and now we're just gonna see a situation where Sinji can just do whatever. <laughs> Like look at all look at all of this. That you you thought you can use the B button on shield? No, thank you. You you thought you can get up close, Pac-Man? No. But, uh, what I always love about Sinji's play is how willing he is just to take what he's given and move on, move on to the next interaction, move on to the next stage in the game. Like he he'll whiff something huge. Kuga will throw out uh, throw out an, a up air on shield, which is normally pretty safe. But Sinji will take his fare and be like, all right, this is what this is a punish I know I can get because most often you haven't been shielding after this. And we'll move on. And we'll get I'll damage you up to 121, one fare at a time. <laughs> I mean the kind of thing that I love about um, you know, Sinji's play as well at this point is that they're really just waiting in center stage. They know that's exactly where Kugo kinda wants to go to without really actually spacing their tools properly. They just really see that this is exactly what they want, and Sinji's is just like, okay, no, um, I'm just gonna wait for your insanely safe options. Okay, and just end out. And maybe you it at that too, because they have actually traded with um, Roy Nair a few seconds ago. There is, there's coming from the backer out of, uh, in the, uh, at the end of his disadvantage, Sinji going for the counter hit and getting it even at 170. Kuga with a solid fair string, and that's a solid amount of damage for sure. Wait, the counter didn't break the hydrant? That's not. Um, the hydrant tough. Oh, well, I, I think it just needed like one more hit, but it wasn't. Yeah. It's not that like strong. Enough. No, Ooh. yeah, it only takes it. Like I mean, that F smash is that F smash is definitely strong. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah, for sure. But um, <laughs> it's definitely looking like uh, Kuga is making this pretty even um, of a game for sure. Ooh, they just definitely need to be careful about a lot of the interactions that they have where they'll be trying to kind of just hit Hydrant. And Wait, hold on. That whole sequence was so good. Uh, we need to, if we could get a run back on this entire, like he lands the F-Smash with the dash attack, chasing him down. The F-Tilt to keep the combo going. Unfortunately, missing ledge and punishing the high recovery. This F-Tilt on the top platform, if we ever get back to it. Yeah. Okay, we already slowed down. Uh, we can speed it up a little bit here. This F tilt right here. That's a little bit back, but. This F tilt was so huge because not only does it force a reaction out from Kuga, but it also takes away any offensive option that he could do. He's basically saying, what are you gonna do about this? The answer is nothing because you're already off stage. 
I mean, that's kind of the thing, and I feel like they were put in that specific situation because of the fact that they were trying to hit Hydrant, like, in a very unsafe way, and it was since was like, okay, you're gonna hit my Hydrant while I'm right next to it, you know, I'm kind of just gonna hit you for it. Um, you kind of just very, need to be very cognizant of how, um, you know, Pac-Man likes to move whenever they actually do use their Hydrant. You don't need to take it out immediately, but there's situations like that where they'll try to um, go a little bit aggressive, or situations where they know you want to attack, so they'll go a little bit defensive. Just a little bit of understanding like that, that um, Kuga actually needs to keep in mind when kind of being very aggressive against Sinji. Yeah, it's Sinji, is, Sinji eats up aggression for breakfast because that Hydrant is such a devastating tool. It, it lets him be flexible while still having a defensive option that isn't shield. Sitting in shield is rough. Sitting behind Hydrant, not so much. Still a solid lead on Kuga's part, showing off the the power that Roy holds in matchups where people try to zone him out and people try to space him out. He, he can just blow you up. He, he can rush in like a giant fire-coated cannonball and blow you up for it. Blow you up for anything, really. If that, he like, can overcommit on that or overshoot on that f tilt and Sinji's just flat out dead. Fortunately for Sinji, he's already conditioned uh, Kuga to be a little bit more passive in center. That's why we're going to a stage like PS2, because it is still very long, but these platforms benefit uh, Fire Emblem characters, namely Roy, a little bit better than the ones on Town and City. What you said about it benefiting them? That apple didn't look like it was benefiting them in any, any way at all. I mean, we'll just, wow, that was such a good 46%. Off of that one galaxy, that's so crazy. I I really think that um you know like Kuka is really positioning themselves too close to Hydrant, and since she's like okay now I'm just gonna destroy Hydrant while you're actually helping you know contribute to that you know destruction of the um, red Hydrant. <laughs> oh, he missed the can follow up after the uh, after the jab. Not one not one that you wanted to miss because you're losing. A lot of kill potential, but there it is following up on the air dodges. Kuga trying to keep the lead down as much as possible. Only 46. And missing the Galga, uh, get, avoiding the Galga combo too. Keeps him, like, it keeps him slow and steady in this game. If you're, it feels like what he's trying to do is make it so that for every one hit that Sinji gets, he's getting two. And Roy's two hits, or very Roy's single hit, will often matter a lot more than just a simple Pac-Man fair or nair. You'll take that damage if you get your sweet spots. Oh, for sure. But kind of looking at this game right now, ooh, this is kind of just a little bit of a situation that can be scary for Kuga. Um, I mean, honestly, I think Sinji has so much control over what they want to do when they get up from the ledge. So they are going to end up in a back air like that and just end up with 73% off of one hit. That's absolutely insane. Wow, this game just floundered away from Kuga so quickly. The Galaga plus Hydrant in the combo and following up afterwards with the back air, that was so much damage all at once. And that's got to be so demoralizing if you're Kuga. Like, you can be in this game. Roy can blow up stocks so quickly. Like, things like that, a double-edged dance, make for very very powerful moves in especially in corners pressure situations like we see but you're forced to rely on big haymakers here instead of the patient kind of neutral that you were playing before you know the kind of thing is too that they've been trying to attack hydrant this whole time so that when they go off stage like that they just miss the tech and then they was that a buffer air dodge or I think yeah. that was the tech and then they buffered air dodge. Yeah, it looks like a tech into uh, yeah tech into buffer air dodge, but he was too low to grab a ledge. Oh no! Yeah, we'll see it right here. Just techs it, buffers air dodge. Yeah. That actually is something that I learned that only happens when you're facing away from the ledge. I right. never knew that. So whenever situations like that happen, Dilt, Dilt was actually one who taught me that. Um, Shout she <laughs> she taught me that whenever you're trying to recover to the ledge with air dodge, it actually doesn't work when you're facing away from the ledge. So that was also a contributing factor to why that didn't happen. But the thing is, Roy actually doesn't do too much damage with a lot of their moves. I think maybe the damage that they do the most is probably with their back air. Um, it's just about like whenever you are trying to remove Hydrant from the equation, you actually need to really know what tools is going to actually you know 
kill hydrant if you're spending time jabbing like 500 different times like it's just like well <laughs> you're not really doing what you're supposed to do without actually getting hit like i think we're gonna see it a little bit soon aside from you know this oh sorry yeah. <laughs> we just seen coasting through the 